those, those people over there, those are the people who made Mr. Blackwell's 37 worst dress list. <laughs> Help me with this thing. They won't settle down. Just come to Trump for one minute. It's insane. Can you help me? Quiet! What do you think this is? A kindergarten? That worked. Right. Yeah. You learned a lot from the movie. Got to buy a whistle. And then you gotta kick ass. <laughs> Our teacher, Arnold Schwarzenegger. ask you how the baby and the wife are the baby is absolutely terrific mm -hmm. it's healthy it's fun it's full of energy it takes a lot of energy I tell you to keep up with that kid it is absolutely amazing day and night they just want to play and now uh, Catherine is at an age she just started walking so she's so enthusiastic about the fact that she can walk mm -hmm. that she's now everywhere opening drawers and going up on tables and taking things down so of course, a lot of things are broken already in the house, so that's obvious, you know. But it's a, it's a lot of fun. And Maria is also doing really well, doing well with her TV show and doing well personally. We are having a great time. Well, that's good. Yes. And, and let's talk about this new movie. Um, a lot of people say don't work with kids and pets. Uh, what was it like working with all these kids? Well, I was uh, really concerned about that in the beginning because uh, a lot of people did say that, you know, <laughs> actors and in show business in general. W.C. Field said it, always he said, you know, never work with children and never work with animals. And here I read the script and there were 30 children in there in the script. And there was a ferret, a little ferret. So I said, as if here have two, the animals and also the yeah. children <laughs> in one hit. So I was uh, concerned about it. But the director, Ivan Reitman, who was very good in training me how to become a kindergarten teacher. He took me to a various different kindergartens and he introduced me to the children and let me work with the children and go through those difficult periods in the beginning before we ever start rolling the film. So by the time we rolled the film, I really felt comfortable with the children and I felt comfortable doing, uh, doing that part. But the first time when I went into that kindergarten, it was scary when you have these 200 kids sitting there waiting like for you. Like these kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> A kindergarten can be much more trouble than those people here, believe me. <laughs> kindergarten is trouble. Um, when, when you're dealing with children as actors, what adjustments do you have to make? Well, you have to, first of all, uh, you have to study your script really well. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no room for you to improvise that much in some areas because the kids will do a lot of the improvising. You see, the kids, uh, what they do is they study the lines and then they will go on on their own. You know, you will, you will tell the kid, uh, I, was, I played the kindergarten teacher, and I said, okay, we play a fun new game. Who is your daddy, and what does he do? And they say, oh, yeah, great, great, great. So they come out, and they then read the lines. They say, my daddy is a truck driver. And then I will say, yes, and where does he live? And then they will go off on their own. They will <laughs> say, well, my daddy is three days a week at home, and then the other four days... My mother doesn't know where he is, he's maybe with some <laughs> mistress, you know, and they would just yeah. go on with, uh, with their own little dialogue, and that became the really valuable dialogue in a movie. It's just absolutely fantastic how well those kids learned, and uh, I would say 90% of the kids are not actors. Yeah. They're just uh, kids from the kindergarten. We wanted to use normal-looking kids, 
and normal acting kids and they did such an incredible job so i know what it means when they say that kids sometimes outdo the actors because yeah. they're really incredible performers and cute and it's just adorable to watch those kids you know speaking of cute and adorable uh premiere magazine do you remember the kid jim jim in the one of the kids named jim jim mm -hmm. uh premiere magazine interviewed him and i don't know if you read the interview yeah, uh, I did, yes. Okay, he made a statement that they asked him about you, and he said, Arnold picks his nose. I've seen him do it many times. That's a yeah. quote. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that's, exactly, that's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, no other actor will go and say, it is great working with Arnold, but he picks his nose. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, they wouldn't. I mean, would you say it? No. I was it doing an interview with Arnold. Why? Well, he picked his nose on the show. I mean, no one says that. Right. But a kid will say that. Uh -huh. And a kid will say anything about their parents. It will say anything about the director. And it's just, that makes it very humorous. And this is why I think the film is doing so well at the box office is because people really fell in love with those children in the movie. And that's the big thing in the film. It's just a really wonderful movie because of the children. Well, you know, it's like I'm always real careful when I'm interviewing you because you're a big man, very, very strong. Yeah, sure. But I, I, I but can't you help have a big that. Wallet. Well, <laughs> not no. My wallet ain't nothing like yours. That's my butt, not my wallet. Man. <laughs> my wallet ain't that big. Sitting there talking to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, no, no, not my wallet. Uh, I gotta go back and ask you: Do you pick your nose a lot? Absolutely. Sometimes, <laughs> yes. There's all kinds of. You don't. Huh? What? I try what to do that? it privately. Oh, I, that's when I do it. <laughs> but the kid said he saw you many yeah, times. I, mean, I, I wouldn't sit on the set and take my was, nose out. You do it right now. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> my fault. <laughs> <laughs> but I was illustrating yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Course. that's what I was doing to the kids I was teaching them a scene <laughs> oh okay how they should pick their nose you see <laughs> there you are oh god <laughs> but they, I, I tell you the kids were absolutely fantastic the funny thing was that they when they saw me they thought I was some kind of an oversized jungle gym and they were jumping all over me there was like always 30 kids on top of me I was wrestling them off <laughs> doing chin-ups on my arms and doing sit-ups here and there. I mean it was really all over me it yeah. was uh, it was fantastic working with them ladies screaming not all over him like that yeah, these I are mean, kids we're talking yeah. about exactly <laughs> she wants to do chin-ups <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it's chin-ups <laughs> <laughs> uh, did they know you from your films or what was their favorite Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, this was one of the questions that uh, our director, Ivan Reitman, asked them when we did the pre-interview. We were going around various different kindergartens in Los Angeles and picking those kids out of 5,000 kids, basically. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions was, you know, the first of all, that we, I had a chance to talk to them and communicate with the kids, but he always asked them questions like, who knows Arnold and who has seen his films and so on. And uh, a lot of kids have seen uh, Twins, for instance, because mm -hmm. it's a... Uh, a movie for kids and so that's one of the films they've seen and they've seen me a lot on television and interview shows and so on they haven't seen uh, many of the r-rated films because they have no chance to go to see this except sometimes to sneak away and and rent one in a in a video store and then see predator or terminator or something like that yeah yeah, yeah. I, I would think uh, kids would sneak and watch cable so they can check out terminator i know they know that oh story. yeah absolutely a lot of kids uh, see those films yeah, yeah. Well, will you look at one of the cameras <coughs> and uh, just say i'll be back and uh, we'll take a commercial I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> the hottest movies out now are um, Macaulay Culkin's Home Alone and your movie. Is there a shift or a trend right now that we're watching in, in, in movie going? Um, I, I mean, they seem to be more family oriented. Absolutely. I think that uh, especially at Christmas time, you have to come out with a film that the whole family can enjoy because this is a time where the family does things together. This is why it's very important uh, for studios to do films at that time or release films at that time that are family oriented. Like Home Alone is a film like this. Kindergarten Cop is very family oriented. It's a children's story, but it all, also has some action and so on. So it has... Uh, you need to have something for the entire family because at that time you couldn't come out with a Terminator or with a Total Recall because that's too hard and it's much better for the summer audience. Yeah. Uh, have you seen Home Alone? Yes, of course. 
Which is the better film, Home Alone or Kindergarten Cop? I, uh, I tell you honestly, I have to praise Home Alone, uh -huh. uh, simply because it's a very entertaining film. The kid is extremely good. The director was brilliant, and also the the, the writer, uh, John Hughes, is a, is a genius writer. Yeah. So I, I really love the film, and I, I don't even want to compare the two. I love my film. I love all of the films that I do. And I'm sure this is the reason why both of the movies are on top of the chart at the box office. Both of the movies are, you know, doing tremendous business. And like you say, it's because they are geared for the whole family. Everyone enjoys those, uh, enjoys those films. Yeah. There should have been more children in Godfather, maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you have a clip, and I'd like to take a look at it. Uh, if you know what it is, let's set it up. Yes, absolutely. It's a clip where I am, for the first time, going into the kindergarten. I've been a police officer, and I have no experience in kindergarten teaching, and I'm going for the first time into kindergarten. And what it shows you on the film is exactly the way I felt when I went for the first time in reality into the kindergarten. Okay, can Candy busted. <laughs> Sandy. Just wait here a minute. is Mr. Kimball, your new kindergarten teacher. <laughs> now let's everybody say good morning, Mr. Kimball. Good morning, Mr. Kimball. Good morning. They're all yours. Hi. How are you? I'm very happy to be here. First, I would like to just get to know you. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Quiet. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. Yes. I need to go to the bathroom. Okay. You can go. Boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. about your taste in movies and a little bit about your personality <clears throat> somebody very close to me told me when you went to see field of dreams you cried is that true yeah do you cry a lot at movies i didn't say a lot oh. <laughs> but, but you did cry no that uh, film it does some films that have things in it that really catch you by surprise certain emotions that you would never expect that that particular scene would do that to you that you feel all of a sudden tears running down um uh, there are other films sometimes. I mean, it's a, I wouldn't say a lot of films, but some films really have a tremendous power and emotionally, and uh, the directing was so well done, and the writing, that it really grabs you. And uh, so that particular film uh, definitely did that. It was one of my favorite films of all times, yes. Yeah. And you were also interested a while back in playing Superman. Uh, maybe at home, but oh. not in a movie. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> at home? <laughs> There's an well, interesting area. No, because I, I never... <laughs> I, uh, I never really went out uh, for the job uh, at all. I mean, I, uh, the jobs that I went out for, I got them. Ooh. And uh, <laughs> I never really tried to do anything else. Uh, so, uh, th the thing is that you develop a lot of different projects uh, throughout the year, and then you pick one or two projects. and. Uh, I always try to keep a nice combination of, uh, you know, action adventure films for the summer and then for the w winter to do some uh, family oriented films like Kindergarten Cop or Black Twins. And for that, of course, my uh, favorite director is uh, Ivan Reitman, who just has the right nose for that and the touch and the talent yeah. to do this kind of films. He's a smart guy. He's a very smart fellow, yes. Really good. Um, when you were growing up, when you were one of these little kids far, far away, who was your role model? Well, I had several. In athletics, it definitely was uh, Muhammad Ali. Hmm. You know, he was, I read everything about him uh, that I could. He was just became the, the world champion in boxing at that time uh, when I was a teenager. And um, I thought everything I read about him is dedication to the sport. And 
also as a human being, I, I, I liked him so much because he was a very giving guy and not as selfish as sometimes he was in a ring. You know, in a ring he had to be selfish, you know, because it was him that he wanted to win. But I mean, otherwise he was a very charitable guy. So he was one of my idols uh, that I felt he was very admirable. Uh, the President Kennedy, uh, when, I was, when I grew up, was a, a, a man that I admired a lot. Um, there were a lot of people that... Uh, that thing, uh, considering who you married. Yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then throughout the years, throughout the years, uh, then of course, uh, you know, you added on different people. I mean, in the old days, also when I grew up, was John Wayne in the movies, uh, Kirk Douglas and those guys that I admired. But then when you grow up, you didn't get to meet other people and read about other people, you know, if I think about someone like uh, Mother Teresa. I mean, uh, this is a, a person that everyone ought to admire because it's the most giving person there is. Or uh, when... Uh, President Reagan was president. Uh, he was a man that I looked up to and admired very much. Or President Bush right now mm -hmm. is a man I look up to and admire very much. So, and my, my parent-in-laws, for instance, uh, um, are very smart and intelligent and sensitive people that I admire. When I need good advice, I always go to them because they're very smart and, and uh, just very giving. Their whole life, you know, is revolving around what can they do for America, what can they do for people all over the world, you know? and that's a nice thing to learn, especially when you come from a sport. Uh, when you're an athlete, you have to kind of be selfish, mm -hmm. and actors sometimes are selfish, and then when you get that little bit of that side, you know, when you're around people like that that are very giving, that rubs off on you, and then you become a very giving person, and I think it had a good effect on me. Yeah. You mentioned Bush. He's in a tough position right now. I mentioned last night how it scares me, even though I know we as Americans, or as a country, we must function from a position of strength. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this situation? And if you were president, how would you handle it? Well, I don't want to uh, get into that because I'm not as well briefed as, uh, as uh, President Bush is or as uh, James Baker is and those people that make those decisions. I just support President Bush 100% on any decision that he makes in regards to the Gulf crisis. Uh, I think that he has the right information. He's a good leader. He's been in that situation uh, before, and is still very here to make tough decisions. And I think that the American people have to show continuous support, because that's what, of course, they count on over there, is that the American people start fizzling out and the support that's going away, and that's what they're counting on. And so far, that hasn't happened, so it's really good that the American people are 100% behind the president. How about uh, Mr. Bush get a whistle and kick some ass? That's right. Now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs>